blessed and praised every moment be the most holy divine sacrament. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without and amen. As we come together this evening to spend a few moments with the Eucharistic Lord, we become aware that we celebrate the Sacred Heart today, a heart that was opened in love for us, a heart that opens up to receive us, to lead us to the love of God. And so we pause before the Eucharistic Lord, thanking him for this personal love, for this unconditional love that he has for us. And as Jesus shows us his sacred heart, as we celebrate him today under this title, we would like to spend a few moments adoring him in the Eucharist, in which we celebrate his body and blood. And so let your response be, we adore you, O Christ, God with us. We adore, we adore you, O Christ, God with us. Your body was for the Magi the sign of divine humanity. We adore you, O Christ, God, God with, with us. us. Your blood is for us the grace of salvation. We adore, we adore you, O Christ, God, God with us. Your body made the woman free from hemorrhage. We adore, we adore you, O Christ. God with us. Your blood is for us the source of sanctity. We adore, we adore you, O Christ, God with us. Your body freed the sinful woman from sin. We adore, we adore you, O Christ, God with us. Your blood is for us the source of life. We adore, we adore you, O Christ, God with us. Your body was received from the cross by your sorrowful mother. We adore you, O Christ, God with us. Your blood is for us the perfect sacrifice of the new covenant. We adore you, O Christ, God with us. Your body was acknowledged by Thomas in the days of joy. We adore you, O Christ, God with us. Your blood is for us the drink of resurrection. We adore you, O Christ, God with us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Kehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all your hairs on the head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the Feast of the Sacred Heart today, with this Eucharistic adoration, we realize that Father's Day weekend is here at Cannes. And on this most beautiful day, I'd like to share with you just one little reflection on the fatherhood of God. If you are familiar with the world religions, with the ancient traditions, and faiths, you will know that God was always to be feared. God was always seen as someone strong, as all-powerful, but he was perceived as being the other, the transcendent one, and God was by no means accessible. In fact, God was to be feared. And that is why religion after religion would be busy trying to appease God, pacify God with all sorts of offerings and sacrifices, even blood offerings. And so it is against this backdrop of a fear for God because he is totally the other, the inaccessible, that Jesus would come as a breath of fresh air. And he would teach us by word and example to call God Abba, Father. My dear sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the Father's Day this weekend, I ask myself and I pose this question to you too. Why did Jesus teach us to call God Father and not mother. If you've been with children, watching children, and observing children grow up, you will have by now realized that for the child, whether it is a he or a she, there is no separation from her mother, from her mother. The mother and the child are one. And that is why the child cannot just get away from the mother. It is all the time around the mother, with the mother, maybe on the mother, hanging on to her. There is no separation. There is no separate identity. The mother and the child are one in the child's mind. And that is why the child would demand that the mother be always near, that the mother feed her, she watch over her. There is no separation. 
months go by, somewhere around the eighth month, developmental psychologists would tell us, as the consciousness and the awareness of the child grows and develops, she or he opens the eyes and looks at someone else walking around the house and says, and by the way, I see someone else in the house, and who is that? And the mother points to her and says, honey, that's your dad, your dada, your appa, your abba, your father. You call him daddy or dad or dada. And so there is someone here in the house who is separate from the mother and therefore separate from the child who chooses to be around, who decides to love. Notice this. So this person who is the other doesn't have to be there, but he chooses to be there. It is not expected of him to love the child in the child's mind. And yet, he decides to love the child. And so, for the child, that is the first experience of an unconditional love from another person, from the third party. A love that was born out of a choice. A love that comes out of a decision. And in the scriptures, we have a word for it. We call it predilection or election. And something in me tells me that it is because of this that Jesus would teach us to call God Father. When every religion said, you don't need to love God, you need to fear God, because God is to be feared, he's totally the other, he's distant, he's not you. And yet, Jesus would come bursting onto the scene and introduce this image of God as a father, as an Abba father. And so today, as we go through this Eucharist, let us thank the Lord for what he has given us, his sacred heart, and that heart that opens out the love of God for us. And so as we go through this adoration, let us thank the Lord for this gift that we have, not something but someone, God, as our father and mother. As a mother, he gives birth to us, and we come to be. And as a father, he watches over us, and he protects us. And so, let us, as we go through this Eucharist, thank the Lord for what we have. To conclude, I was in the Tri-Valley for about four or five years, Pleasanton, Dublin, and Livermore. And during those years, I was involved in the ministry to the incarcerated in Santa Rita Jail. And I remember talking to some of those chaplains. They told me how for Mother's Day, the inmates kept asking them for cards so they could write to their mothers. And so when Father's Day came around, these chaplains went and bought loads and loads of carts. And then he would tell me with tears in his eyes, William, would you believe it when I tell you that we couldn't give away even one card? Because the inmates were angry with their fathers. And then he went on to tell me how a good number of them were there only because they felt abandoned by their fathers. Fathers who were drunkards, fathers who were drug addicts, fathers who walked out on their family. And they hold their father responsible for their being behind bars. Well, if your son or your grandson or daughter has been to jail, don't beat yourself up. You did what you could as a good father. And uh, these are adults. They had their own decision to make. And yet, this is something that we cannot mess out. People are rebellious precisely because they do not experience that tenderness, that unconditional love from a father figure in their younger days. 
And so as we go through this Eucharist, let's also pray for families that are hurting because they miss their fathers or because they didn't get to be raised by their fathers. And let us pray that all of us may appreciate what we have, a God who is our father and mother. Grateful as we are to God, who is our Father, let's sing to him saying, you are a good, good Father. Let's bow in adoration as we sing the Tanto Mergo. Tanto Mergo Sacramentum Venere Murcernui 
et antiquum documentum, no voce dat ritui, restet fides supplementum, sensum defectui. Genitori, genitoque, laus et jubilatio, salus honor virtus quoque, sit et benedictio. Procedenti ab utroque, comparsit laudatio. Amen. You gave them bread from heaven containing in itself all sweetness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as a memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed, Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and With hearts filled with gratitude, we sing, loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, love. 
It's fun.